What's up guys, it's Noble here and today I'm bringing you the first in a new series. What we're going to be doing is a season challenge series which will, uh, it's basically sort of a rival mode if you will on this game where you get 10 races for a season, uh, just short 5 lap races, no pit stops or anything and then it's sort of, you pick a rival and you get 3 races, it's a best of 3 so the, the driver who scores 2 better results than the chosen rival gets to then potentially accept a contract offer to drive that rival's car for the next three races out and then you sort of pick a new rival after that and you so and so all the way till the end of the season so as you can see we're kicking things off for the start of this season in the Caterham chosen that because it'd be nice to actually get a bit of competitiveness we need a car really with curves especially considering the first round is at Italy so it will be pretty uh, boring I'd imagine if we're driving around in a Marussia or HRT with no cars or anything as it wouldn't really be much overtaking. See David Croft there just introducing us to the first round at the Italian Grand Prix. So you can see we've gone through no assists as always and then we're gonna, as you can see we're kicking off things, we've got the uh, one shot qualifying and the predetermined setups. We're going to actually miss out on qualifying because it'd be far more entertaining, I think, for you guys to watch me come or try and come through the back from the back, rather than starting maybe halfway through the field and then either, depending on how this goes, just holding up people as the AI don't really like to break later than you, or potentially getting out front and then just sort of doing a couple of laps by myself, not really in the action. I don't know how this is going to go, so it'll be relatively interesting. We've gone for the lowest downforce setup so we're going to see what the game's going to give us. We can change the front wing as that's allowed under Park Ferme. Low standard brakes, not particularly looking forward to using those around Monza. He definitely, in the Caterham that has a pretty shocking top speed compared to a lot of other cars combined now with low brake pressure that's going to be going to be quite hard to actually make overtaking moves as trying to outbrake another car at the end of a long straight is going to be a real challenge but that's what this series is about so hopefully it'll provide some good entertainment you see the team not bothering to change my alignment at all just couldn't be asked and just gonna send me out on my way so see, as I said not we haven't done qualifying so we'll be starting in 24th position so hopefully we'll be able to provide some good action for you guys Rivals have been chosen and the pressure is starting to build so David Croft is explaining there that we've picked our rival who is Bruno Senna in the Williams. I'm sure you might have been able to see where he was starting from the qualifying screen earlier in the video. I was too busy talking and didn't actually get to see that so I do apologise but we're now about to start the race as the five lights come on and they go out now and we are away. So getting past Carter Kane instantly and Kovalainen. We're going to try and squeeze between Charles Peake and De La Rosa here, coming down to turn one, but they're having a bit of a wiggle, but we get through, and then Kovalainen comes out of nowhere, making it four wide briefly as we then sort of bump our way between the two of them, going around the outside of turn one, a little bit of contact with Verne, but hoping to get the inside of her to turn two, and then getting on the curves to get a good exit and hopefully power past a few of these cars on the run down to the second chicane. Massa, for some reason, deciding to pretty much break around this flat out right hander, which has given us a nice run on all these cars ahead of us, breaking early, as usual, with the AI in front of us, trying to go around the outside of the rest of it. He's defended well, and then our lack of speed through the chicanes allows Senna to try and come around the outside, but he hasn't been able to do it, and we find ourselves in 15th place already after just a sector and a half. It's coming through the two Les Lesmos now, and then got the rest ahead. Maldonado, I think, just in front of him. But crucially, we're ahead of our rival Senna, who is just behind us. So we'll have to try and make up a few more places in the hope that he doesn't come charging through the field with us. Going up the inside of De Resta into Ascari, he's held it around the outside, but then um, just, well, drives himself into the gravel, which has caused, as you see, quite a lot of havoc behind us, which has lost him and everyone from 15th place downwards a lot of time. So in that group was Senna, so that's given us a nice advantage over him for this first race of the season. Bit of understeer and parabolica there due to the uh, the Caterham just not having the best downforce you've ever seen but we just about get away with it and we're still in the slipstream of Maldonado which is the crucial thing to be on this track as as soon as you get out of that slipstream it can be pretty difficult to keep up with another car that's faster than the straight but we've braked a lot later or the AI braked a lot earlier 
than what it was needed and we've managed to go around the outside of Maldonado a little touch on Perez for turn 2 but nothing too bad as we then get onto our curves again going around the left hand side of him that'll give us the inside for the second chicane but we might already have a move done before we even get to the braking zone which is surprising considering I wasn't expecting a lot from the caterham in terms of top end speed and acceleration but it doesn't seem too bad maybe the other cars are running a bit bit of a higher downfall setup for some reason but who knows we haven't got the longest gearbox on either I think our top speed was only 207 so maybe our acceleration is a bit better but as we come towards the end of the straights especially with DRS activated from the next lap onwards we could find ourselves struggling a bit but for now we're in 12th place so pretty good coming up behind Hulkenberg coming through Ascari now used up all our cars already but we're well within the slipstream as we come down towards Parabolica getting right underneath his rear wings we pull out now towards the left going to try and go round his outside side by side coming out into the breakers over Parabolica but Hulkenberg for whatever reason decides to uh, pretty much give that one up and that allows us through to 11th place could find ourselves in trouble now as we haven't got the slipstream on Grugeon and we're a long way behind and Hulkenberg isn't too far behind and he'll be in our slipstream so I'm expecting him to maybe, well actually no he's not anywhere near, I was expecting him to come up our inside but considering how poor the AI are on the brakes as you can see there we just gained what a second and a half on Grosjean in one braking zone so that's pretty pretty shocking but we'll take it as we get on the curves once more out of turn two picking up another position by using that method as we now enter the top ten in our little cater and not doing too bad Kobayashi ahead of us now and then ahead of him is Rosberg by the looks of things just trying to get as close as possible make sure we're in that DRS zone as the uh, detection point is just around this corner between the two Lesmos that white line there as we now come through Lesmo 2 I'm pretty sure the AI are ridiculously quick down this this straight as you can see by Kirby actually literally just taking off and Grosjean now coming right up our inside this could be interesting into Ascari we're going to try and hold on round the outside and we've just about managed it but that just shows how unrealistic this game is and that Grosjean hasn't speared us off into the gravel but we're still holding on to 10th place and now after using our curves coming out of Ascari we've really latched onto the back of Kobayashi so we're going to be well within DRS range again down the pit straight and into turn 1 he hasn't got the best of exit, it looks like he's really struggling with acceleration and a lot of cars are whereas we seem to have better acceleration but as you'll probably see we're going to reach our top speed pretty quickly and then Kobayashi is going to keep on pulling away he's going to go to the left of Rosberg who has a little bit of a wobble as we then go up the inside of both of them down into turn one that's a pretty good move double overtake there gaining two positions and up into eighth as we set the fastest lap as well quite a big gap to button in seventh place but it looks like the uh, top seven all sort of nose to tail so hopefully they'll uh, cost each other a bit of time as they start squabbling for positions and then sort of compromising each other's entry and exits and just lines in general through corners but unfortunately we're not by the looks of things going to be in DRS which is going to hinder us quite a lot as we try and make progress towards the top seven but it doesn't look like it's going to be able to come to fruition Rosberg may be in DRS zone but he's a fair bit behind he's not going to cause us any troubles down into the breaking zone of Ascari so we need to make the most of this clean air to try and hit the apex as well as we can to try and close up that gap we can see we lost half a second in that middle sector to button purely down to DRS as we're actually a bit quicker through the corners I feel especially under braking as well we're gaining a lot of time on most of the AI but down the straights especially with that DRS we're just sort of being left for dead really as you can see as we come out this corner you can see them all nose to tails they will be definitely costing each other time and even just through that final sector we've gained back that half a second so hopefully with a heavy braking zone for turn one where we've been extremely good this race which is surprising with the uh, low pressure brakes and you can see just visibly there how much time they're costing each other being bunched up nose to tail and we've got onto the back of both Button and Reichen as they're going side by side we're going to try and go on the right hand side of Reichen making it three wide they both sort of back out which is a it's a not the best feature I mean obviously you don't want to be getting crashed into by the, by the AI but just coming around a relatively straight piece of track with just a little hint of a curve you'd expect the AI to be able to sort of keep the power on without shitting themselves and having to slam on the brakes in case of causing a crash but that's what we've been dealt with so we'll just carry on as we're now into 6th place on the final lap 
in the DRS range of weather so we'll get that deployed saving a little bit of curves in case we can get a good one for Ascari and in case the cars in front sort of have a bit of a bit of cock up and give, up, give us a good run I can see there's a Schumacher getting a bit wobbly behind the Ferrari which has in turn held up Weber we've had to compromise our speed for that corner as well but we've got a better exit than Weber we passed him we're in the slipstream of Schumacher coming up behind right underneath his rear wings we come into the final corner we're going up his inside Schumacher's trying to hold on around the outside he's gone in a bit deep and then he's had to get off and out of the throttle to prevent himself from going into the grass and the gravel which has given us fourth place and the at the end of the race what a superb result that is from the back of the grid really wasn't expecting anything as good as that especially with the uh, the Caterham with its not best top top speed and just lack of downforce really but we've made it work for us we finished well ahead of Serna which is the main objective we've got the fastest lap as well which is a nice extra bonus but uh, yeah that's a, a great result for the first part of this season we're moving on to the second race pretty soon which I think is at Spa if I can remember off the top of my head just going through the constructors and drivers championships sort of everything pretty much standard after only one race to the second race weekend of the season and we're here at Spa Francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix. So yep, as David Cross says, we're at Spa Francorchamps, the Belgian Grand Prix. We we'll once again starting in last place as we have a look at the quick setup menu now. We're going to be going for another low downfall setup. Looks like we're going to be going for the far right setup which is the lowest of all downfall setups. So we're going to be going for that top speed as that's really what you need when you're sort of coming from the back of the field the only time you can really overtake is when you are at the end of a long straight and then trying to make up that position on the brake so you need good top speed to be able to keep close to the car in front to then have a look, little look at him down into a heavy braking zone so we'll be looking to take that into advantage it's going to go through the setup again see if it's going to give us the same base setup as we had in Monza it's at the same wing angles, we're going to alter that front wing again and yeah, just looking at it pretty, I think it is identical setup to what the game gave us for Monza so that didn't that worked out pretty well for us actually so who knows but a lot more sort of medium to high speed corners around this track so we could come under some pressure by the cars who are, I'm sure they'll be running up quite a lot more downforce than we will so I'm sure they'll be catching us through the mid part of the lap which will perhaps compromise us especially through the final sector and then if we can't you never know with that bus stop chicane we might be able to take it similarly to how we were turn one for Monza where we were gaining a lot of time which we really need to be able to do around here to get in that DRS range which I think I'm not sure where the detection point is I'm not sure if it's still after turn one or at the top of Eau Rouge but I'm sure we'll find out later on in this race Coverline in there, what are you doing? You've got Kurz and you're still behind the two HRTs in Marussia. No wonder you've been sacked for 2013. Anyway, as the lights are on and now they're out, we get another pretty good start. Bouncing off the Revlim Owen first before shifting up through the gears, going up the inside of Kartikane. Coverline and coming back up our inside. We're going to try and go around the outside. Two lines really, you can either go around the outside and try and gain positions as all the cars bunch up on the inside, which hasn't happened there, but we're going to get on our Kurz now coming through the middle of Glock and Coverline and a lot of cars sort of have wobbling about and then they've all braked for Eau Rouge which isn't particularly necessary but we were sort of expecting it but that caught us out quite a lot as we sort of bounce off the wall a little bit but we got away with it unscathed we're now behind Hulkenberg he pulls out to defend which means we're going to go to the left get the slipstream off centre and then just drive straight past him on the run down to this start of sector 2 we're actually got the inside of another car there as we're now just behind Rosberg and De Resta trying to get a nice line through this right-hander to potentially set up a move on Rosberg. He's covering the inside, but as usual, he's braked early, which has allowed us to try and hold a line around the outside. We've done that nicely. He hasn't run us off the road, and we've been able to make that position late on the brakes there into that corner with no name. As we now, on the exit, trying to pull alongside De Resta into pull on. This is going to be a risky move if we do go for it, which we are. We're not sure on what gear to be taking in, but we're going to go fourth and De Resta giving up that one. He tried to fight it but he realised that it wasn't going to work and if he had we would have run him out of road which we would be entitled to do as we were more than half car length alongside so good driving by him as we get a little bit sideways over that bouncy curb but we're gonna we're behind Ricardo now we're up into 14th already so another very good first lap as we're gonna we I don't think we're in range of the slipstream so this could be 
quite hurtful. We've got Rosberg behind the Mercedes, very strong Mercedes engine, of course. So he may be able to launch an attack on us into the bus stop chicane. But it looks like we we're now picking up the slipstream from Ricardo, surprisingly, as we now come down to the bus stop chicane. We're going to be very late on the brakes. We're actually going up the inside of Ricardo there. Amazing stuff. Sort of a similar move to Vettel on Sutil at the Australian Grand Prix down to turn three. Came out of nowhere, just slammed on the brakes and somehow made it stick without locking up or running wide as we now come down to turn one and massively late on the brakes again even with low pressure going around the outside of two cars very surprising to see but we'll take it as we now find ourselves in 11th behind Massa who is slowing down for the run through over for some reason but we've seen we've seen it and we are still right underneath his rear wing as we now get on our curves he's trying to sort of cover in the middle part of the track I think we might have actually clicked him with our front wing there but I'm hoping he'll get over it as we uh, make that move. Breaking in time not to run into the back of Perez as we nearly lose the back end over that curb, but we've held on to it as we then get a bit of understeer again through that right hander. As Perez goes defensive, we're not really close enough to actually sort of make a move, but he's felt the need to. We're going for a little cut back on the exit there on the outside of Perez now, and we've actually made it stick for whatever reason, the AI not being aggressive enough. Not, he, had the, he would have had the right to sort of run us off the track there, but he didn't, and we took advantage of that. And we found ourselves now up into ninth place behind Kobayashi, but in front of Perez, so in a Salva sandwich. Again, we're not going to be within DRS range at the moment of Kobayashi, but we've still got a good sector and a bit to go before we need to worry about that. The slipstream looks to be out of range as well, so that may be an issue. 1.2 seconds, so that is quite a quite an alarming gap, especially with the long straights, but with this breaking zone into the bus stop chicane we seem to be very good at compared to the AI, so we'll be looking to get right underneath the rear wing of Kobayashi coming out of turn one on the run to Eau Rouge in just a few corners. So he's spotting the braking zone nicely, clipping the apexes on the right and then the left. Not spinning up the rears too much on the exit as that can cost you a bit of time, but just the perfect sort of amount of wheel slip. To get us a good exit as we now, again on the brakes, just massively gaining on the car ahead. Got a good exit, we're getting on the curves, I think we're going to use a lot of our curves, maybe even all of it, on the run down to Eau Rouge, and we do. Getting well ahead of Kobashi, and now we're behind Grosjean once more. Will we have DRS or won't we have DRS? The answer is, we do have DRS, so that's a good bonus, although we haven't really gained much as we were nearly at our top speed already, as Kobayashi's coming up our inside, but... He decides to break it, I think it's 150 kilometres before the corner for whatever reason, but... Oh well, we're still going to hold on to that 8th place as we now look to try and move up a few more positions. We've got Grosjean ahead, Button just ahead of him, and then Roikkonen in 5th place. We'll... There's a few cars ahead of us here, we're looking to be uh, maybe getting onto the podium perhaps. We've got two cars, as you might be able to see from the minimap, streaking ahead. They look to be pretty out of range, especially since we've only got two and a bit laps to go. But yeah, there's a train of looks to be like five cars ahead of us, and with our sort of our, a good ability to be late braking compared to the AI, we might be able to make something of this. But we'll see, we'll see. They're all obviously going to have DRS on each other, which is going to make my life a lot difficult, as our top speed is again pretty short compared to the other cars around us as our, our car is sort of set up and our, its capabilities are that of the cars that you can see on the minimap who aren't even in sector 3 yet so that's why we're sort of struggling in the sort of the long the end of the long straights where we haven't got the top speed to really compete but once more on the braking zone to the bus stop chicane we're going up the inside of Grosjean we actually hit the back of Button because I think he might have even gone into reverse at some point through there but on the exit we've got another good exit we're sort of keeping a stalemate on who's got the better acceleration as we then brake later on the outside and then take that position with ease as we move up to 6th place behind Raikkonen just 2 tenths off Weber and his fastest time, I presume he's one of the cars at the top of the track along with perhaps Hamilton I think, because he was on pole if I'm not mistaken but yeah you can see just the massive gap that they've got, it's surprising that they've managed to pull out a gap like that and all these cars that we're amongst haven't been able to go with them as, as much as these guys are fighting, you'd think the two ahead of them as well are fighting, but they don't seem to be costing each other anywhere near as much time as these guys around us are. So we've actually, earlier in the lap, for I think it was before a Rouge, we've passed Raikkonen up into fifth place as we now come up behind 
Vettel and Alonso. Just trying to get a good run out of this corner on Alonso. Maybe having a look into Puan, but we're not going to be able to draw alongside him, so we're just going to have to try and follow him as closely as he can. Obviously, we haven't got the downforce on that these cars have, so we're going to be struggling through this part of the track. But we've just got to try and keep as close as possible, try and pick up the slipstream through the final sector down towards the bus of chicane, and then just maybe launch an attack with our superior braking performance, even with low pressure brakes somehow. So coming into the final sector we're well within the slipstream range of Alonso but he's also in the slipstream range of Vettel so perhaps he'll be pulling away from us but with our low downfall setup on we'll be hoping to stick with him as much as we can. He seems to be pulling away just a little bit as we now come down towards the chicane. Maybe he'll be able to launch an attack on Vettel but he looks to be quite a distance behind actually. As on the brakes we closed up once more trying to get a good exit out of the final chicane on the run to turn one pretty similar to what we done to Button last lap except we're, more, we're now alongside we're, sorry excuse me well before turn one and then once more very late on the brakes nearly hitting the back of Vettel there but we've managed to avoid him and then still managed to get a good exit hold the position ahead of Alonso and then with the use of Kers draw past Alon uh, sorry Vettel down towards Eau Rouge once more and we are up into a podium position so Weber is indeed in second place. I'm not sure who's in first. Not I think it's Hamilton, but I think in the distance you can just about make out the two cars battling as Vettel comes steaming up behind us with his DRS, but not being able to make any impression on us. So three seconds is the gap to the leading duo, but that does look visibly smaller now, just a couple of corners later. And maybe who knows? We're coming into the part of the track where we're not particularly strong. But if these cars keep fighting, who knows what might be able to happen, potentially, down into the bus stop chicane. If these guys are still fighting through sort of the next few corners, they're going to be costing each other a lot of exit speed, which is going to play to our strength, as we're trying to make the most of this clean air as possible, just hitting the apexes as well as we can, getting on the power nice and early. And you can see that we're still a fair distance behind, I think that is Hamilton and Weber, but, so we're not going to get the slipstream. But Weber might be close enough to perhaps launch an attack on Hamilton into the final two corners, which could give us a potential run at the com maybe coming out of the corner if they're going to compromise each other that much. As we come through Blanche One, you can see Weber really getting close to Hamilton now as they come towards the braking zone. Hamilton goes defensive, Weber trying to go around the outside. We're late on the brakes as well, gaining a lot of time. There's a bit of contact between the two ahead. We're trying to take a nice wide line into the final part of the chicane. We've got a good switchback on Weber, and we're through, we're through past Weber, out of the final corner, and we are into second place, which is where we are going to finish. What a fantastic race that was, just biding our time, getting past people, and then hunting them down, hunting the leaders down at least, when we had the clean air. And their sort of battling helped us massively to uh, come from 24th on the grid to take second position. And you see Bruno Senna there down in 16th place, which means we have beaten him on the rival challenge. Which means after we've gone through the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors' Championship, we will have the opportunity to accept a contract from Williams, or potentially uh, not accept that uh, contract if we want to stick with Caterham, but that, guys, will be up to you. This is where you come into it. I want to, for you to leave your comments in below. Sorry, leave your, yeah, leave your comments below on whether you want me to accept the contract offer from Williams or if you want me to reject it and carry on with Caterham and pick a different rival, which if you do, then let me know which rival you want me to choose. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of the new series. And, yeah, just thank you for watching, and I'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.